Good evening. I'm going to call to order the Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting for Monday, December 5th, 2016, recorded by ACMI. Uh, first on our agenda this evening is a continuation of the public hearing for EDR Special Permit Docket 3519, which is the 19R Park Avenue project by the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Uh, I understand that we've got some updated drawings, plans this evening, so I will turn it over to the proponents and our architects to describe how things have changed since our last meeting, please. Thank you, Mr. Bunnell. You also have an updated report from BSC concerning the transportation impact report. Yes. So I Thank will you. have uh, Mr. Bomer if, uh, and Mr. Warkington if they could. <coughs> okay, we'll start with the architectural mm -hmm. piece. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, continuing to hear us. Uh, we took, all of us took uh, uh, copious notes and, and uh, paid a lot of attention to the comments that we did get and worked very hard to, to make changes that responded directly to the comments that we got. The major changes that you'll see tonight have to do with both analysis and some uh, uh, additional, we think, help as far as impact on our neighbors on Wall Street Place, which is really the, uh, the only street that's actually impacted uh, by uh, solar, by shadows, and I'll go through that. We did a little more research, actually a lot more research, and we're going to add something to our plans. We looked uh, at the design of the corner building. Uh, as we continue to get comments on that, we did a lot more work on that as well and i think we do have a lot to report it's not strictly architectural but there are some uh, there's some new news about the traffic as well so i'll start with the shadow studies so what we did was we expanded our study what you had before was the solstice information both the winter and summer solstice which kind of showed a period of zero impact and a period that would have the most impact to the neighbors on the east. What we really wanted to quantify a little bit better was exactly what is that impact. Uh, we, again, we know that it is primarily morning impact as the neighbors are, uh, the neighbors on Wall Street Place are directly to the west side of the site. So we look very carefully at that. The diagrams that you had before, it is important to, to note that they both show existing shadows that are largely created because the site doesn't have a building on it. Now they're created by landscaping and large trees. Uh, there are some large trees on the western border. They're actually not on our site. They're on the neighbor's site. Those trees, we have no reason to believe those trees are going anywhere. But there is significant shadow impact from those trees as an existing condition on those homes on Wall Street Place. But I, the way that I've diagrammed this, I, you can look independently uh, from what the proposed building would do versus what existing trees would do. And what we discovered, and I'll quickly run through these, is that the only time of any impact, even all the way in the worst period, which is the, the winter uh, solstice, is very limited to very few hours in the morning. <clears throat> and having looked at all year round at all times, and I think if you look through these diagrams, you can see that. So this is one of the new diagrams that you got. It's the autumn equinox that's in September. At that point, there are still leaves on the trees. So our shadow study, frankly, the, the shadows that are cast by our building are lower than the shadows on the, uh, from the cast from the existing trees that are still leafed out at that point. And I'll show you a sectional drawing that demonstrates that. But as you can see in the, in the uh, early morning, that's when the proposed building is casting shadows towards the east or towards the west. And I'll show you a diagram of where those shadows actually hit that adjacent, uh, the adjacent homes on the street <coughs> place. Once you're at noon on all four uh, seasons, all four uh, of the periods of the year, uh, there is no shadow impact by noon on any of the buildings, whether on Wall Street or on Wall Street Place. So uh, I think you can see that when you go through them. The other new study that we have is March, spring equinox, which is roughly equivalent to the autumn equinox. You see again that blue shadow appears to come right to the back side of those homes 
on the Lowell Street Place, and I'll show you the sectional diagram and show you where, where they would hit it. Uh, spring is March 20th, so the trees uh, would not be fully leafed out probably at that point, so it's more important where that shadow actually hits, hits the building. And again, by noon, there is no shadow impact on those buildings and no sh shadow impact on those buildings. That same uh, analysis continues all the way around to the evening when the sun's all the way around in the west sky. Summer, obviously, all the sun's very high, uh, very little shadow impact anywhere. Uh, you do get in the very late evening, the shadows cast all the way back onto the bike path. And then winter, this is the one that I noted was the most impactful, but the hours of impact are, are very small by the time you're at noon. On December 21st, we're no longer casting any shadows on the Lowell Street Place neighbors. At that point, those trees obviously have no leaves. Uh, so what we really started to think about that our impact Actually, and even though this didn't come up at the, at the last hearing, we started to think, well, there is another impact, and that impact is there is a building there. It's 60, 63 feet away. I'll check that number as we go in. But we realized that there would be some impact from lights in the apartments from that building that didn't used to be there. So what we're proposing and what's on the new landscape plan that you have is we're proposing to plant a, a a screen of fast growing uh, <coughs> conifers so that they would be an effective screen for the lights from the apartment building. Uh, that's a new addition to our plans, the landscape plan. And we're also planning the plans that you had before showed a, a fence, a new wooden fence that extended along the edge of the parking lot, but it stopped. There is an existing PVC fence. We'd also like to make it clear that we're, uh, we would extend that wooden fence along the entire western border that would improve the sense of privacy. This project is not likely to happen for a few years because of the funding source. You've heard that before. Uh, and if there were neighbors who wanted to keep that existing fence, that would be okay too. But we do want, want to know that we would extend that fence so that there is uh, privacy in those backyards and then uh, cutting down on the impact with the uh, conifers. This is, uh, these are a couple other images. So you can see here, the red is the imprint of where the building is. You can see the growth that already exists. Along this line, we are proposing 63 feet away from the neighbor's home. Uh, the homes on Lowell Street, it's even more, it's 76 feet away. Uh, in this area, those trees would go away because that's where the parking lot is, but we are proposing another planted screen along there. This, I think, is the interesting uh, drawing. There's also a new drawing. This is not in your package, uh, but I think it's uh, pretty interesting. The, the, these are the shadows that are cast uh, during the uh, summer and, or I'm sorry, during the fall. Uh, equinox of fall and uh, and the spring equinox. So you can see the shadow cast by our building, which is, would be overshadowed by the trees that are already there. But if you were to just strictly look at the shadow of our building, it actually, even in the worst case, doesn't hit uh, even at the windowsill height of the first floor on that building. Uh, so uh, we think it's really de minimis. The shadow impact is uh, not of great importance. Again, given the existing trees that are there and the fact that even in the worst period, which would come after the fall equinox, <laughs> quite a while after the fall equinox, wrapping around to early spring, is when you would see some impact in the morning. Uh, the new landscape plan, uh, Paul's going to go back because he's going to talk about the building changes. So these are the changes that we're proposing in the landscape plan. This is what we're proposing as a dead screen conifers, uh, knowing that we're going to be clearing all around there to build the building. We would like to do a screen there so that the neighbors are, the neighbors view directly into apartments and vice versa is blocked by that screen. Uh, 
again, we're, I think we're looking at hemlocks. I believe they proposed hemlocks for that. Uh, and then the fence, as I said before, stopped there. We already had a, a planted screen along the parking lot, so we're extending a taller planted conifer screen that goes all the way out to the edge of the property. So those are the changes we made from study of, uh, I think, a, a very realistic and honest study of shadow impact, <coughs> and then some a new idea that wasn't brought up last uh, at our live stream, but we think it would be a nice, uh, a, a nice thing to offer to help cut down on the impact from these neighbors on the Lowell Street place. And Paul, I'll go back to this, and if that's where you want to start, maybe. Okay, so um, looking at the corner building, you know, we had in our some of the comments that we had in the roads of this office. But some of the comments we had about the design as we had it last time were is that it was a bit blocky, not a little bit of a plan. So we took some of that, took one of that uh, that to heart and changed it up some in order to and the first part of that, what we did there is we increased the height and the prominence of that corner element. So we, we would have, and we did that by, uh, you know, part of the, also the things that we were reacting here too is it, you know, we also just didn't have as, as prominent as a, of an entrance to the historic neighborhood. So we wanted to bring some importance to that corner. And we did that by changing up some trim elements adding some color. We've been trying to keep it in the similar color scheme to some of the elements we have on the larger building that we, uh, that we didn't have a lot of changes to. But, uh, let's see here. So, but also we wanted to bring that cornice height a little bit higher so that it also adds to the, to the importance of that on the edge. Um, so also looking to, to uh, Changing bits of bits of the detail of the <coughs> cornice, we changed the type of window to have it be a double hung window with some muntins, again giving it a bit more of a residential appearance. So this is how we did it on this side, and then we took that similar approach to the elevation that you have facing Park Avenue, and then brought a similar kind of importance to this end piece of it here, which is... I'm sorry, we can't see anything. I know. You know, we have it in front of us. We can turn it. Yeah. 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 You, you, yeah. you, you can turn it. We, we have it. Show us. Yeah. Okay, all right, sorry. I mean, they're seeing everything. Yeah, yeah, let yeah. I me mean, just rotate that. Okay, all right, so you guys have your plans. So anyway. Just bring it. All right. Okay. So. Paul, why don't you do the first page again today? Yeah. Okay. So. So again, the corner element here, showing that off, bringing a little more importance to it, having some trims, some added detailing, raising that corner up so that it's uh, it's basically a more prominent entry piece on that corner that's facing down the square. But then we take that and we mirror that on the other side of the building that one of the sees as we approach the park. So that, you see it here on the end of the building and sort of matching those two. And again, having the trim pieces and giving it a, a little more presence on the corner of the building a little more. Gravitas, as it were. And then <coughs> using that similar kind of language, we also use that for our entry piece. This is the view from Lowell Street, and our, our driveway kind of runs right past this. But this is our uh, this is sort of our entry piece. We use that same bit of added added height at the uh, at the cornice, some of the trim elements, of color, in order to also just forms the entry to the site for the the, uh, the other building as well. So, you know, sign 
moving on to the elevations. You see we pulled together the lines of the trim with the windows, the, uh, the double bonds. Keep ordering that in a way that it's, it's a nice rhythm going across each facade. This is sort of the most, the most prominent one of these is the park down the elevation. This is that first element, the one you see from down the square. And, uh, and then this is the backside elevation coming from Park Street. In order to achieve this sort of angle that we actually trimmed our building back a little bit so that it, before it planned, these walls actually came out to these corners. We shaved off these corner angles at each of these pieces in order to give it that shape and, uh, and bring out that, that, uh, that prominent corners on that end of that. Right, that's Questions about the changes in the line? That would be a good time. responses from BSC uh, to the questions raised by TAP. Uh, the report has been updated. And uh, it's worth <coughs> noting that this type of use is probably one of the least traffic intensive uses for this site. Um, there is virtually limited impact and uh, the Housing Corporation of Arlington is prepared to accept the two recommendations made by the consultant that there be, uh, you know, do not block the intersection and no left turn out of the site. Those were two of the recommendations that were made. And we think that the um, traffic consultant's report supports the grant of this special permit. I know we have two members of uh, Transportation Advisory Committee here this evening. If you could stand up, I can't see too far back here. Have you had a chance to take a look at this? Yes, we have. Um, and generally, we think all of the responses, uh, we think they're at appropriate responses to the issues that we raised, with one exception that we disagree with. That is, uh, they say BSC does not believe that this to be feasible option for the following reasons, talking about the Park Ave driveway. And the reasons they give are really reflective of assuming it would be left turning in and out. And I think in our discussion last time, uh, the group was really focused on a right turn in and a right turn out of it, if there is a park at the driveway. So um, we would disagree with the conclusion that it's not easy. Either right way or one way. It could be an exit only, but we still wouldn't necessarily want to allow left turn. Right, right turn only. Right turn only. And you could allow a right turn in. If it's the right of way is too narrow for two way driveways, certainly could be one way. But we just want to clarify that we feel it's, it, it could work if that's the way to do it. Yeah, I'm sorry, if I could just have you state your name. Oh, I'm that's sorry. Well, Howard Mews, I'm the chairman of the TAP. And I have over 29 drivers. Thank you, Howard. No, the only thing that I would say, I pre appreciate TAP's response, is that that's an operating gas station there. And that's a right of way. We'd have to look at the legal documents to see whether that's even something that could occur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that could be an issue. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The, the only, I'm sorry. The only other thing I, I would like to um, uh, restate is that um, this is an R7 zone, which is the town has zoned this as apartment type areas. And we had our architects look at how many units feasibly could be put there under the bylaw and with the zoning. And based on the FAR same type units, theoretically 57 units could go there. What the Housing Corporation of Arlington is proposing is approximately 60% of, of that, uh, those number of units. 
uh, and I would suggest to you that it's reasonable under the circumstances. Questions from the board? I, I had one question, and it was related to that um, question about an, a second entrance or exit on Park Ave. Um, Howard, did you uh, see the, the comment from the consultants about a safety issue that they uh, perceived from southbound Park Ave traffic related to that drive? Yes, I did, and I'm not sure I see what the problem is. Um, the right turn out is pretty one of the safest maneuvers you can make. Uh, I think, I don't think we've actually checked it, but I was at the site and I think you would have adequate sight distance looking back towards uh, Downing Square. So a car would be able to wait for a gap to pull out. I, I think their argument was that cars would be coming out of Downing Square and accelerate, but that would be true of any driveway near any intersection. I don't think there's anything unique about this. So. I, I, I don't share that concern. Other questions? All right. I'll open Actually, it. I'm sorry. I just want to go ahead. So, so what is that now? That's an easement over for? It's a right-of-way. It's a right-of-way. Right 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 Where he puts all the snow blowers. Right yeah, no, I just, because I did go down and take a look. Yeah. And I'm yeah. trying to picture exactly where that is compared to where the chain link fence is there. I'm it's assuming. where the trucks are parked today. Okay, okay. All right, and it's a right of way. It's a right of way. It is not our property. Okay. And if I may, Mr. Vanell, uh, Mr. Howard would like to talk about the types of tenants that would be residing there. Because there were some, but who were the people that would be living in these? I think that's why I think it's going to be. Go ahead. Okay. So I just want to make sure that everyone remembers and understands that we have 1,000 household waiting lists. Three, over 300 of them are Arlington residents that it, when we choose, we have to do a lottery for our tenants. And when we choose them, uh, we have a 70% preference for Arlington residents to move into our building. So 70% of the households will be Arlington residents uh, already. And the majority of our, our typical profile for our residents are working individuals or retired professionals sometimes. Um, we have social workers. Uh, nonprofit staff members, teachers, librarians, um, artists, musicians. We actually have two tenants that are members of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. I mean, these are the type of tenants we have, as well as disabled and single parents and victims of domestic violence. So I just want to be sure that the community and the board really understand who we house and who we will be housing in this uh, development. <clears throat> There's nothing further from the proponent or from the board. Um, I will open it up to public comment. Please raise your hand. My call on you, stand. Uh, state your name and address. Address the board, and then I'll either uh, we can either attempt to answer the question or direct like that to the proponent. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Christine Gilbert, um, 56 Westminster Avenue. Um, I am speaking both as a person who is a neighbor to this project and as a person who cares strongly about housing. And I felt like it was important to speak with both of those voices. I wanted first to thank the architects for their efforts to revise the plans and like some of the feedback. I know that some of my neighbors have been concerned about the light and I'm, I'm grateful for some of the shading issues. We're all concerned about the traffic and some of the walking in particular. I mean, I'm always walking my son up to the Pierce School and down together to like to take the bus here today. So I guess I would want to raise a particular concern if there was that driveway out onto Park Avenue, how to make sure it was safe for pedestrians going down the sidewalk there. It's already a little bit dicey walking through what's effectively the gas station parking lot to access the the public transportation, which is in some ways so key to our understanding of how much traffic will be going in and out. So I want to I want to thank you also for your efforts to give accurate numbers for the number of cars. There had been some kind of alarmist numbers out there. I feel like the ones you've got are more realistic, but for that to work, 
we've got to make sure it's actually easy for people to, to get to the bus and to get there safely. I want to make sure that this is done in a way that will work for the neighborhood because I care about my neighbors and I want to be a good neighbor to them. But I'm also speaking as somebody who's really conscious just how very thin the line can be. It's the merest of accidents that I live on Westminster and am here as a neighbor rather than a person on the waiting list. And I'm so conscious it could be any of us on either side. So I live in the neighborhood and I want this to work, but I also want it to work in a way that works for everybody. I suppose that's all obvious, but I felt compelled to come say all of this. And I thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Sir. My name is Ed Shorn Lady. I live in White Street. Thank you for Street. Can you speak uh, up, please? Can you sorry? speak up, please? Uh, I live on 76 White Street. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. I just wonder if, if uh, people, just with a show of hands, how many people rolled their bicycles here today? So we have two people out of maybe 40. How many people rode the bus? So we have three people out of four. So, but you're asking um, out of a 32 unit complex with only 20 parking spaces, you're asking roughly half the people in that complex to either ride a bus or ride their bikes. And I'm guessing that the, the uh, client list that uh, Pam mentioned, uh, a fair amount of you know, musicians, <coughs> maybe, maybe you could ride their bikes down something Hall, but I'm guessing they won't. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll take the bus, but that takes a while. Um, I don't, I, I think it should, these, these projects should be built so that there's at least one parking space per unit. And that doesn't account for visitors. Uh, if you have uh, elderly or people with disabilities and they're having caregivers come, therapists or whatever, there's no place for them to park. I don't know if there's enough parking for uh, those folks that have cars with uh, handicap stickers or plates on them. So I was wondering if it would be possible to I understand why they don't want to go and, and dig out underneath the main building because of the soil contamination issue there. But there shouldn't be much in the way of soil contamination under the lower. So it would be possible to put parking under that to increase the number of parking spaces. Uh, another issue I see with this project is I don't see where they're going to put snow. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, several months out of the year where snow is an issue and it makes it a difficult to ride bikes. Although there are a few diehards that ride all over along, I recognize that, but most people don't. And, uh, you know, buses are quite inconvenient. So, uh, I, I'd like to see the uh, project have, uh, what, what's in the, I, I forget, what, what are the zoning order? We just changed the town meeting. We changed change the uh, number of parking spaces that you could have a big building. But I don't think it was the less than one. Mm -hmm. so, Go ahead. Uh, it was by special permit, you could reduce it to 25% of what was what is required. Okay. And with transportation demand management, which they have prepared a plan. And what's required? Uh, give me a minute, I have that. Did, did you do that? How many people walked here? I don't know if I missed that. Let's not get off track. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a survey at all. In the special conditions, when, when, it's, when you'd like to speak, please raise your hand and I'll call it. We'll, we'll talk about it. Snow removal is addressed in the proposed special conditions. Uh, I can ask Pam to go a little bit deeper into that with the ones at the border. Prepared to accept it with snow removal from all parts of the site, including abutting sidewalks and pedestrian walkway from the sidewalk to the bikeway, is a responsibility of the owner. It shall be accomplished in accordance with town bylaws. Could you address how that will be done? So we do this on all of our larger projects. We hire a landscape, uh, 
a landscape and snow removal company that is out there uh, as soon as there is more than half an inch of snow. Um, and they put it on various parts of the site. If there's no room, they truck it out and it's removed. We do it every year. Thank you. Okay, so, so, you're, so you don't mind hauling it away. You don't mind the expense of hauling it away. No. Okay. That's, that's, it's their responsibility. And if, if they're permitted to do it, that's for them to worry about. Right. No, I get it. Um, other questions? Go ahead, Mark. Oh, the, the question of the parking. Uh, there's 48 spaces required in the bylaw. Uh, the 25% is allowed, that's 12. So they have more than the 12 spaces that are required with the special permit. Oh, well, by special permit, they're allowed to have 25%? Yes. Of the, the, the allowable spaces? That's right. No. There was a 25% reduction. No. 25% of the allowable spaces. That's just the kind of big problem. That's what town meeting passed. We have, we have problems all around. That's what yeah. town meeting passed at meeting this spring. Other questions? In the back, sir. Uh, Gary Collision, 24 North Street. Uh, first of all, uh, I try not to be too long winded, but. You know, uh, I don't think any of here is questioning the, the good intentions and, and who is going to be renting and how good people they are. I don't think that's, that's nice to say. But, uh, a bunch of things have sort of come to mind. I know I talked last time about urban versus suburban. I guess the corner, as big and monolithic as it is, I know you guys have made some great changes. I appreciate all that. Uh, I don't see the screens up on top uh, that we talked about, the mechanicals that add 10 feet, number one. Oh, maybe they're there. I can't see them. You can't see it because the view of it, but kind of okay. blocks it. But I did. I did check as we talked last time. I'm a solar installer, so you do need to be at 37 degrees, and you would never lay it flat, which we talked about last time. So that's that's the top. <laughs> so what the, the total height is then what at that point? The height of that screen is seven feet above the level of the roof. So, so the shadow plans take that into account. They do. They do. Okay. So that's why I want to check that. Um, and I think. I think. Kind of, it seems to me, it's just my opinion, but what is all coming down to is the scope and the size of this thing. I've been driving around looking at other projects similar, uh, where they look like homes for the people. I don't abut to the back of this thing, but I know a lot of people that do. And there are plenty of ways to make them look like homes, even though they're not. Even as horrible as Sunrise is, it kind of looks like houses. It doesn't look like you know, you're in the city. So maybe that corner can be maybe not so huge. And you know that size dictates uh, how many people they can get in to pay for the expense of the lot. And I know a comment was made last time to you guys to please hurry up because our financing depends on speed. I don't think that should be part of your decision. I don't think that's your problem. I really hate to say that, but it's not. It's not. Your, your decision is based on the facts. Does it fit the, the neighborhood? Does it hurt the people behind who are now going to be living in shade, whose driveways aren't going to melt all winter long? That sort of thing. Um, I, think, I think it needs to be looked at as a neighborhood, not as a apartment building, because it is a neighborhood. All the other places that they've talked about as comparison, down the street this way, down the street that way, there's no houses around those. They're in, they're in blocks that have no real neighboring neighborhoods. So this is being plumped in a bunch of people here's backyard. And I think it could be made, granted, on its own, that's a nice design. Where it's going, it just it's a square peg in a round hole. Um, <clears throat> And I'm sorry, the size is you need to get that many people to pay for the mortgage, but that doesn't really cut it when it comes to who's already moved into a suburban neighborhood and now you're plunking an urban building on top of their lap. You know, 20 years from now, when Pam's not running the company, you know, who's, who's shoving, who's taking the snow up? Where's it getting? It's getting dumped into Jerry's Brook, which is a wetland, needs to be protected. Um, you know, you can say, great, we're going to do that. But we're all, we all asked last time, who's going to be culpable when the shadows aren't right, when the snow isn't pulled out? And you guys said, well, you can take it up with the board at that time. You guys aren't going to be there. So what guarantees everybody have here have that the shadow plans are correct, all these things are going to be held, and who's accountable at that point when everybody who lives up next to it is stuck with something that doesn't work? You know, scale, scope, 
and match the neighborhoods where it really should do. The corner, maybe it's commercial, they make it look commercial like that, but the other guys who live next to it, I, I don't know, I feel, they just feel horrible for those people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here's John Lovett, uh, town meeting member, precinct 17. Uh, last Sunday, there was a story in the globe in regards to Brookline handling a housing problem. It took them a whole year to finally get to some kind of agreement. And it raised two questions in my mind. One, in a small paragraph, it stated, another issue will be for officials to ensure that the deed restriction will prevent future developments. Is that part of your obligation to make sure that a deed is issued, that once this is built, it will it'll be in some kind of piece of paper that there'll be no future development allowed on it? I will propose an answer to that question. Well, the deed restriction will be that it has to remain affordable housing in perpetuity. And in order to build more, we'd have to come back to, there would be no space on the site. They have to reopen the special permit to build more. But I mean, when, when this is done, that'll be stated in the paperwork. Yes. That it'll that be recorded with the recorder. Yes. It'll be, yes. The second thing is that I remember on one of the other hearings, one of you gentlemen came out and mentioned where a generator or transformer was going to be in order to supply the power to run the 34 units. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was mentioned probably in one of the parking spaces to accommodate such a thing that day. Uh, my I think that was the Broadway yes. project. Was that the project? Okay. I guess my question here would be, have arrangements been made for a dumpster location at this particular site? This was discussed in the last hearing. There is no dumpster. We'll be using plastic bins. For, each for, the oh, for the front building, building only on the we are a larger building it's in the interior. interior. It's interior. So to, to understand that, I mean, I remember she mentioned the recyclables were placed out on the sidewalk, but I don't recall anybody really talking about the 34 units, which to me would require a dumpster of some sort. Can you explain that in detail? Well, it will be inside. The truck will back up to a door, which will open probably double wide. The dumpster inside will be pulled out and dumped. So the truck will go onto the property to get the dumpster? Yes. It's private pickup, a scheduled private pickup. Or it may be municipal, but we have that on our other properties as well. I think the board should be made aware, as I stated before, that I lived down in that area for 10 years. And without so much as a care in the world, dumpsters were being emptied at 2.30 in the morning. Well, this would not happen. What I, what I would like to say is, where is the location of the dumpster going to be in relation to people who live in their houses down there now, and will they be exposed to 2 30 in the morning? The First, it's against town bylaw to empty trash at 2 30 in the morning. Uh, and that's yeah, that's it never stopped, Mr. Chairman, it never stopped. In violation of town bylaw. That's the answer I can give you. Um, Ms. Hallett can explain to you where the access point will be on the plan. Where is the dumpster to be located if you have the low street in fact there right there? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, so uh, actually it's they show the high roads in Lowell Street. So the, the smaller the smaller uh, receptacles for the for our smaller building would be here, you'd access it through the uh, access aisle for the accessible parking. So they would pull those out, put those in the truck. The uh, access to the trash room is down here um, off, of, uh, off of our driveway. So that's fully screened off that way. So really, I mean, it's, it's not directly adjacent to any, any of the adjacent uh, buildings here. So I mean, as far as the time of day goes, it's a private pickup, it can be scheduled now, anytime during business hours. Right now, yeah. right now, Capitol Square is picked up about 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> Our general conditions also include 
Trash only to be picked up on weekdays, only between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. I think you should be made aware that they're abusing them. You know, we have them down. Well, I'm, I'm not going to allow any further discussion on that point. That's not what we're discussing here tonight, but thank you for your points. Great. Yeah. Um, Lisa Hines, Sunset Road. Um, I asked at the last meeting about the provisions for the floodplain, and um, I would just love some clarification about what the curb elevation is determined at on Lowell Street. Curb elevation on Lowell Street? Well, I think that's what um, was discussed as the, the zoning allows for 30 feet above the curb elevation, and that's I, I, maybe I'm misremembering, okay. but I think, I think, I think that's were, what you were talking about. It was uh, in reference to the overall height allowed in the building is 40 feet above the average of the curb elevation uh, at the street line. So I, I think that's. So, yeah, can you just share with me what the average okay, of yeah. the curb um, elevation is? It's not related to the floodplain, no, because the floodplain is a lower elevation anyway. It's determined no, by I, the I understand that the curb is not in the floodplain, but the floodplain um, is at the base flood elevation is 149.3 feet. Correct, yeah. And at the last meeting, you stated that you would use a flow-through foundation design, which mm -hmm. would require your first floor level, the bottom of your first floor level construction to be above the base flood elevation. Correct. And so we just wanted to have a better understanding of your map because your right. drawings show the ground floor at level zero. Right, that's the, the height that zero is relative to the height of the building. Right, but so. it, because it doesn't relate to the curve right, or right. the floodplain. I, okay, I so I understand. So the, the average of those curve elevations, which you know, range from a, a maximum of 156 to a minimum of uh, 52.96 is average of those is 154.14 feet. Okay, so that's that's the top of curve elevation. Our top of slab elevation for our larger building, which is located down closer to the to the floodplain down here, that would be at, at least 18 inches above the level of the floodplain. The floodplain's at 149 feet five. Okay, so that puts our base of the building at about 151 feet, okay? So the, the reason for the determination of the curve height, the reason that becomes relevant, because we use that to determine what the top, what the top of roof is allowed to be right. according to the bio. It's 40 feet plus, the, the, it's 40 feet above that curve average. Mm -hmm. So that, so 154.14 plus 40, 194, all right, 1.4. So our building, since we're saying it's going to be 40 feet, that zero to 40, our roof height, we're anticipating that being a good three feet below the maximum allowed under the zone bylaw. Even though we're raising the bottom of the building in order to keep it out of the floodplain elevation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments. Uh, we'll come back to you, sir. Yes. Arbor Bay, uh, 27 Lansing Lane. <coughs> I've lived in Arlington all but four of my 81 years, so I'm a resident. Uh, I'm here to support this project and ask this board to approve it. In the last two years, I have volunteered for the uh, food pantry in Arlington and have watched hundreds of people, needy people, come in for the food. Even worse than that, I think, is the fact in my neighborhood, which is the Morningside neighborhood, I have watched over 12 houses taken down to the ground, replaced with 1.2, 1.3 million dollar homes, and they have sold readily. This town is pricey now at a very high end. There is very little room for those people who can ill afford those type of prices. So I would ask the board to support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. 
Hi, my name is Michael Best. I live at 113 Method Street. I just have an impact statement as far as um, what it's like being um, among Arlington Housing Corp. I'm on a tenant. And um, it's, we, my wife and I have endured some tough times. My wife, Mary Lou, I'm Mike Best. She's been a lifelong Arlington resident. And I just want to read something I wrote. Um, we came here to uh, tell you our story tonight, so maybe you can see from our perspective how much um, ACA has helped my family. My wife and I both work. I work for Comcast, and she works part-time for St. Agnes. But even with both our incomes, we struggle with not afford to live in Arlington, if not for the ACA. We have four sons, Michael, Joshua, James. My son, James is a cancer survivor. He's disabled, he was diagnosed at five months old, has been fighting this battle his whole life. Although he's been cancer free since the age of 17, he has many disabilities. We have been raising our granddaughter for nine years. She's my oldest son's daughter who became a single dad while in the military. He served 14 years, five deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan. My granddaughter, Ty, has been in the Arlington school system since pre-K, and she was currently a seventh grade honor student at Audison Middle School. We had many difficult times, and ACA has helped us so many times. Mary had a massive heart attack in 05. She actually died at Mount Auburn Hospital, but they brought her back to life, thank God. Uh, two years ago, I suffered a catastrophic injury while on the job for Comcast. I brought my left leg completely I was out of work for over a year, causing more hardship and financial distress. Even though we are uh, behind on our rent, but ACA has always helped us, and we're very grateful. And I just think the community needs to know that it's helping people like us. We're hardworking people. Just catastrophic things have happened in our life, and I just want to say they, they help a lot of people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. My name is John Dice. I'm a long-term town meeting member here and lived in Arlington for 40, about 40 years. And uh, I'm a very strong supporter of the Housing Corporation. <coughs> there have been some statements made here this evening to the effect that uh, HCA is not going to be responsible in one way or another for how well this place is maintained, etc and how well they will be uh, accepted by the neighbors. Uh, the term was used that it's a uh, square peg in a round hole. But if you look at that location right now, it is a hole. <laughs> and what will result is a rather beautiful building, in my opinion. So I, I hope you will uh, think carefully about how well it is that Housing Corporation wanted to, to serve our community over these many years. And, it's likely to be just as responsible in the future, which has been. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Neil Monold. Uh, I live at 12 Gravel Place. Um, I'm also a board member of Housing Corporation Arlington, and I'm an architect. Um, and I just want to, uh, a, a couple of points I, I, I want to make. It's first, how difficult this site and how risky this site is to develop because of the contamination in the soil and the density and the, and the, the, um, the uh, water level and so on. Um, I really think that the Housing Corporation is doing a service to the town to take on this project to not only deal with a contaminated site, a difficult site, but also to provide much needed affordable housing as you've heard from, from folks here. Um, the second thing I just want to say is that I really appreciate the effort that the architects have made to listen and adjust the design, especially the corner building. I think it's, it's really important that this building becomes a gateway to the, the Lowell Street and, and the neighborhood there. And I think um, that they have listened and will continue to listen um, to feedback from the residents and the neighborhood. Uh, the Housing Corporation is committed to working with and trying to respond to any of the, the design suggestions that, that uh, come from the neighborhood. So I think that folks should, should feel confident and comfortable that the Housing Corporation will be responsive to any of the concerns or needs that they have.
Thank you. I saw a hand in the back a few times. Yes, sir. Dave Bergman, uh, Road, um, uh, which is pretty close. Uh, I've uh, been listening to uh, Sunrise facility across the way. I was promised that if someone did uh, sunlight studies, um, and unfortunately, uh, I was accurate when I was measuring the sap, the shadow at the solstice of the 30-foot pole in the BTA lot. And the architect that did the review and gave me the information was wrong. I watched three hours at the end of each day, starting from about now until, you know, uh, middle of January when it's to get later. So for those of you, it's a big price. And especially when I would say I was deceived, you know, 15 years ago when that whole process was approved. Um, so for each of you that that thinks losing sunlight is not serious, would each of you like to have where you're presently living a house put up behind you so that you lose essentially half your uh, sunlight during the course of the day. I mean, that's one issue, and I think it's pretty serious, because Wall Street Place is an entry and gateway in the town of Arlington. Um, you know, my grandfather and grandmother had uh, 122 Lowell Street, had, uh, had two kids born there, and then moved around the corner into Lowell Street Place, and had another child there. And then they built the place in East Allen. So it's been a gateway for a long time. The houses down beyond the end, uh, or along the bikeway where it drops off near, I uh, forget the name of that, uh, development that came in the multi-story unit that still gets flooded when there's a somewhat serious flood. Anyways, there's some inexpensive houses along there and they too get flooded when things get bad. And this area that's getting developed unfortunately will speed a bigger flood downstream to those locations just because I've seen a bigger flood with the building in Lexington over the course of the past 60 years. So just, just a couple of comments. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. <coughs> Thank you. Just already uh, 56 hours. Just a, a couple of questions. I was wondering if the board reviewed the 2012 permit for the apartment building on this site. Anyone actually look at it? 2012? Yes, there was a apartment building permit for this uh, exact same site in 2012. <coughs> Obviously, it was never built, the permit expired. Uh, I had some questions about what the setbacks are. I, I have it here, it's, it's filed with registry of deeds. But I'd like to keep it, I'm happy to share it with you. But apparently, you haven't looked at it. I just, uh, I would like to mention that at that time, the ARB permitted 22 units. Um, now you're permitting more than 50 percent more, but the permit. Um, the reason I bring it up is the permit actually had a nice discussion about what the required setbacks were, and I'm curious what are the setbacks for this development, both along the bike path and along um, the road with questions. Laura, you have to. Yeah, the architect is really good. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of, there's a bunch of different setback requirements. So along the uh, side lot lines, we have the, we have a couple of 20, I believe they're 25 foot setbacks. Okay, there's a different setback and there, it, it basically it's steps. Um, and there's, it's described in the bylaw in a little bit of a complicated formula. But basically there's one line that, that draws 
it's about 25 feet, and then it steps back to another distance further back, and that's where we have a separate section of the line across at that. So we've got this section, and then we have another section building. That's why this jogs back and forth along there. Okay, the, is that the bike path along the line? This is the bike path, yes. And then along the roadways? And then along the roadways, the, 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 the setback along Lowell Street is we can we take an average of the adjacent buildings along there. So I believe uh, we take that as about 10.9 or 11 feet along that edge. And then the other setback along here, I believe is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's not right it's here, but it's 18, 17 and a half, 18 feet from, uh, from Park Avenue. So there's, there's a number of different setbacks, and we put the, both of the buildings within each of them. In the general, the earlier permit, they talked about a 20 foot setback. So. Yeah, it's 20. It's 20, so now 25. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. Another question somebody mentioned about growth. Does this project have to go before the Conservation Commission? Yes. 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 So is that after or has it already been after? After. Um, and then in regard to parking, is the board still contending that? they can reduce the parking to 25%. Did I, was there something wrong with my copy of the bylaw change that was enacted last time? Because I can't see that it mentions the R7 zoning district. Uh, it, it mentions multifamily residential zones. In the text of the change? Or only in the text? In, in the text as well, let, let me check. I think I would just say that the zoning And the, the zoning enforcement officer has looked at it and he agrees that it, it, the intent was to cover all the multifamily residential zones. Well, I, I would um, suggest that you don't go by what the intent was, you have to go by what the language says. And I think if the board were to adopt that position, you're, you're really opening up yourself up to a potential appeal. I think there's a lot of neighbors and people who have received the notice, parties that interest in this uh, special permit. And I think you're actually giving them an excellent opportunity to appeal the permit, because clearly, the, the board does not have the authority to reduce, you know, parking in an R2 zone or an R3 zone to 25%, because they're not listed in that section of the bylaw, neither is the R7 zone. And again, I would suggest you take a look at the old um, <coughs> permit from 2012. I don't think the parking demand for um, facilities has actually changed that much in the last dozen years, and I'm sure they didn't allow that few uh, spaces. So, um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Not yet. Oh, is, is there anyone who would like to speak that has not had the opportunity to speak yet? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, my name is Phil Turville. I'm an architect and sculptor here in Arlington, 1165 Arm, uh, Massachusetts Avenue. I've lived here for about 10 years. Um, I like the development a lot. I support the, uh, like the uh, Housing Corporation of Arlington a lot. I think they're very, very competent developers. And um, probably one of the few that would take on a site like this with the uh, access and shape and um, environmental problems as it has. Um, I like the idea of it being a buffer between the commercial areas uh, along that side and up in the front of Park Ave and the residential area behind it. I like that a lot. I think that's the reason it's an R7 zone. I think the intent was to mitigate between the neighborhoods close by and the commercial and industrial areas across the street. Um, but I also think it's an, it's an economic development issue. I think that increasing a little bit of density in the heights is very, very good for the business up there. There are a lot of empty storefronts there now. Businesses have been coming and going. I use a lot of those services up there myself. Um, and it, it seems like a, a really powerful idea to increase certain areas of density for residential use in areas where there are commercial services, small businesses available to the residents. And you know, particularly, this is a population which may be walking, or bicycles, uh, public transportation, and that's all right there. So, you know, my theory is that um, there was some wisdom in, in uh, allowing this parcel to be an R7. And uh, I think that the benefit to the community um, weighs heavily on uh, the value of this property. And I think the economic development issues and the buffering issues are both very important in particular in this, in this development. I agree with many of the comments about supporting uh, 
the uh, Housing Corporation of Arlington, but I particularly think this is a good project for this location. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Kate Casa, and I've lived in Arlington for about 20 years. I grew up in Burlington, uh, so I feel like I'm a pretty long-time person here. And um, I, I don't want to take a lot of time. I think this gentleman raised a number of points I wanted to say. The Housing Corpor Corporation of Arlington, many pe people have spoken about it. It's made up of long-time residents, people who've been on that board 20 years or better. Um, and I don't think that they're going anywhere. I think that, you know, some of the operational things that have been raised, there should be, you know, there will be and there should be conversation and talk to make sure that the community is listened to and responded to, and I feel it will be. And um, <clears throat> I also love the idea of bringing density into the heights. I'm very concerned about you know, the, the empty storefronts there and the services that are just disappearing. But the main thing that I care <clears throat> very deeply about is the need. Um, you know, we're all watching Arlington change and, you know, it's, uh, I love living here and I think probably many people do and I would like to keep the diversity of um, families and class that attracted me to this town in the first place 20 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Yeah. I never thought I was going to do this. Um, my name is Patricia O'Connor Prindle. I live at 13 Newport Street in Arlington. I'm what I guess you guys would call a carpet bagger. I've only been here for 11 years. <laughs> uh, I came, uh, but I, I've been in the housing industry or real estate for 35 years. And um, I'm here strictly because I support and have supported in the other two towns I lived for 20 years each. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, be able to pay about $5,600,000 for a first floor of a 1917 two-family house with a thousand square feet. Nice. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, it's just gotten out of hand. Um, people need, you got to, I, I don't know what else to do except support it everywhere it is. We've got to get, uh, so we have our, we need the diversity and it's not even there, but the teachers, they look, firemen, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so, and I'm in the industry and it's wacky. I mean, what the prices are. So I'm here to support anything that this town um, can do to um, give a break to somebody who hasn't had it as lucky as I have. And I've been working since I was 13 years old, so believe me, and I've had a lot of tragedy in my life, but Thank you. okay, that's the end. So. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm curious about the elevations. Uh, the video you know, mentioned the, the elevations. And, uh, so the, the curb at Lowell Street, right at, right at, at the entrance, is what, 151? Do I remember that right? 151 feet? The curb at Lowell Street is, is uh, about 154. 154. Okay. And, the, uh, and the elevation of the, the top of the slab and the back row is 149. It'd be about 151. 151. Okay. Do you know what's there now? What the elevation of the ground is now? Uh, is that? I mean, it varies over the over the area of that of that site. So I mean, I don't know that I could give you one answer to. Well, the, well let's, let's take the take the end of the driveway. No. Yeah, 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 I know it's not flat. I think it's back. It must be Where are we going with this? Well, I'm just curious how do you, you know, we keep talking about a, a possible second exit, emergency exit on the park, yeah? No. No. The, the, the idea of a second exit has been discussed. Well, not, not that it's going to be an exit, but there's, there's supposed to be a right of way through there. There is a right of way. 
is traversable. And from looking at the drawings, I don't quite see how that's going to work. Because the elevation of the, of the gas station there is about eight, nine feet above the elevation of the back there. And if you've got a driveway that comes in and curves around, and I, see, I don't exactly know where the driveway is compared to where the tree lines are and what the ground is now, because it's, it's kind of hard to visualize. It's not staked out or anything. Um, but I just, like I said, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around the, the, the whole elevation thing. I know that the back of the gas station, for instance, has, uh, has an entrance on the, on the lower level in the back. And I don't know if that's going to wind up being very. I mean, I just, just out of curiosity, I mean, if you're curious about the heights, I mean, I'm seeing a couple of spot elevations near the back of the gas station, which are around 151, 151. So you really haven't changed things. So I, I, I don't, and those are within the property, what looks like within the property line of the gas station. So I. But I, well, I, I did want to point out, because you know, the site grades are extremely important, both for uh, traversability. Uh, we've committed to having an accessible path that goes all the way from Lowell Street all the way across to the bike path. Right, we have environmental areas. concerns, we have uh, uh, floodplain concerns, and there's a lot of process, months, frankly, months and months and months of process to really arrive at the final grades of the site to ensure that it has zero impact in a flooding event. So we don't have all the answers. Those are good questions, but I can't answer them right now. Our civil engineer has not advanced the drawings we haven't met with CONCOM yet. There's a lot of work before the plan really gets nailed down. We're confident it's there. We have a civil engineer. He's studied it thoroughly. But we're really just at the beginning of that process. And you know, it's, it's public process. Everything we do from this point forward is public process when it involves the site plan because of the environmental issues. So I invite everybody to keep watching it. It's extremely important work. But, but we just said I don't have the question. answers. It's feasible. What we have drawn, we know it's feasible after a lot of study. What we haven't completely determined is every grade in every location, ensuring that we're not going to have any negative impact in any kind of flood event. And a lot of those questions are beyond the purview of this board. It comes under the Kong Kong and state DEP. Yeah, and, and I'm, not, I'm not thinking about flood plans or anything. Well, I think all I'm going to mention is we're thinking a lot about it because it's all an integrated uh, problem. You know, right. it's, it's all an integrated design problem. And, uh, we know it's feasible. We know what the goals are. And uh, we have a path to solving them. We just don't have all of the answers right now. Yeah. It's, it's an ongoing process. I'm sure these gentlemen will be happy to discuss things with you after the year is over as well. <clears throat> Other questions? In the back. Um, Tannic Palatian, 24 North Street. I am all for um, Wellington policy, any type of policy. It's the proximity and also the huge project, 34 units going on, less than an acre of land in that corner. And the impact that it will have on us as neighbors. Um, I'm in a flood zone. I've been in a flood zone for a long time. But that project's going to put me in a, even more of a flood zone lane. Insurances will probably go up quite a bit. Also, the little lady directing the traffic with the kids crossing the street, she's going to get run down with 34 units added along with all of that traffic. I, I'm for low income housing and for any type of housing to go there, but not such a huge project. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Tom Lee, 76 Verse Street, um, board member of the UCA, and I stand behind this project. I think it um, would be a, a good um, addition to that land as it is now and clean it all up. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Street Harbor Lot 111, Sunnyside Avenue. I've heard a couple of people mention flooding, and since I look at a floodplain, I thought I'd ask a couple of floodplain questions if that's. We're per permissible. Okay. We're not. 
just we're not. We, it's, we, it's, we, we, we've allowed our, our data. data. <laughs> but it's, it's wet, flood loan questions are, are far beyond. I see my time. <laughs> <laughs> We have had preliminary conversations. Oh, yes. Uh, it is going to go to the CONCOM. Um, Pam we'll has it, talked to them already once, and um, it'll be publicly advertised. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to kick the can down no, no, or no, pass no. the buck, but, but the, that, that's not what we're here to discuss. That, that's why I said inappropriate. <laughs> Thank you. Others? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Suzanne McLeod. I live at 61 Madison Avenue and uh, at the top of Mount Gilboa. So I drive through Downing Square a lot, bike through, walk through. Um, I'm all in favor of affordable housing at that spot. I think it's, it's, it's needed certainly in the town and I think this is a good place for it. My first reaction is just aesthetic and visual and I've heard a lot of comments that I, I'm probably in accordance with about the, the urbanness or the blockiness of the building. Some part of me wants it to even go more blocky and be more contemporary and maybe just really define itself architecturally. <laughs> but not, not, but not, uh, so, and, and, or does it go more towards sunrise and dormers and peak roof and kind of pretend to look like a house in the neighborhood? I don't know that I can answer those questions. I do know that what I see right now to me looks kind of like it was Maybe it's kind of, um, I don't know, I feel like I've seen it a thousand times in different places. So maybe there's something about the, um, but anyway, I'm sure it's an ongoing process. And I'm not quite sure how to best reflect the neighborhood, whether it's the entry into the Mass Ave, resident, the commercial part of things, or an entry into the residential kinder, gentler neighborhood side of things. And, between both, but I guess something more um, individual in some way. But that's a problem for the architects. But I'm glad there's housing going to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Others in the back. Lania Berger, I'm at a two reservoir road. Um, my comment is about the uh, overflow of parking into the, the local streets. Let, um, Reservoir North, or adjacent to each other, North has had three homes in the last 12 years that have gone from a single family to a duplex. And that has impacted the, the parking on that street to the point now that only residents really can, we, we barely get enough cars on the street for the residents and for a guest for them. And if this project goes in with this, the limited parking that it has. I feel like we will we will get up the first thing in the weekends if anybody we know anybody's coming over and have to block off parking so that we know that people that come to come down our street, come and visit us or any of our neighbors will um, will be sure to have some place to park. Um, we even get you know parking during the day with, with people using the heights uh, bus. I know we, we've talked about this at prior meetings, but I'm going to ask Pam Allen to again address the transportation management plan, uh, the use uh, and possession of automobiles by your residents, and visitor parking. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the leases that we will have, which will restrict cars that people can own. Uh, we have 23 spaces. We will have 23 households that are allowed a space. Uh, that will be in the lease. Anyone else will be towed. Um, and so it really limits the number of cars that will be on site at any time. Uh, in terms of visitor parking, these are residents of Arlington. They can, visitors can park on public streets. Uh, that is appropriate. They won't be able to park overnight. Uh, and if they park on private streets and uh, you have the right to call the police and have them ticketed and potentially towed. Um, our transportation demand management plan is designed to encourage people to not utilize autos. Um, that is the whole trend in the industry. Uh, we will be uh, offering incentives to use bikes, to walk, 
to uh, take public transportation. And um, that's what you've heard about on your side. Thank you. Go Station in to make it more convenient for the residents to to use bikes. There, there are a lot of advantages to that location. To, to I think that I, I think I can answer that. I know that's been discussed as part of other projects, and I think the startup cost for Hubway is is extremely prohibitive, uh, particularly for this project, especially since there isn't another one within close proximity. Mm -hmm. It is a great idea, but I just don't think it's possible. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom Mansfield, 11 Old Street Place, Arlington. Uh, I like to use uh, located design. It just seems very large overall, and the volume seems large. Um, my concern is that you're going to, we see it from the street, but if you approach it from anywhere else, you're just going to see a big model of the building. Uh, I think. Anybody knows East Cambridge and the old state house that just looms there um, that you can see for miles around. That was obviously a mistake. Um, I feel this is going to be well above the architectural style of all the surrounding buildings. If you're approaching it from any angle, it's just going to stand out. It's going to be not fitting with the style. Um, and I think you could work the space better to kind of taper it into the surrounding neighborhoods, not build a wall right up to the neighbors uh, on Lowell Street or Lowell Street <coughs> Place. You know, build it down so maybe you go two stories, you know, three stories, two stories down into the neighborhood to create more of a, a smoothing aesthetic feel to it. So as you're looking at it from a distance or right up next to it, it's just not imposing like it is designed today. Um, and my other, I have a question about the process. I don't know anything about the process, so bear with me. Um, shadow plots, I believe, were presented today. Is there a review period for those plots? Um, how does that work? This is actually the second meeting where we've seen shadow plots. Mm -hmm. uh, we requested them from the architects and the proponents after the first meeting, which was held back in October. Uh, there have been several public, meeting, public hearings, all advertised, all posted well in advance of the hearing. And I believe the proponent has held a number of open public meetings as well. We have not been part of those, but they've been. Yep, I apologize. I was not at the last one. I was in the previous one. I didn't know they were presented then. So are they available on public record then? We, you, uh, we have a couple copies up here. They're always available at the Department of Planning and Community Development. And if we see something there that suggests it's not accurate, I mean, would we present that? You can send an email to any of the members of the board or to the director of planning or the assistant director of planning. We're always happy to receive personal right. comments outside of the <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Quick, uh, sort of semi related. Stand up, please. Very cool. One more street. Somewhat unrelated to this. Um, but also related, and I respect anybody that would tackle a contaminated site like this, but I think what everybody needs to understand, um, whether whether they fix the site on their dollar or that's tax dollars, or a company comes in and fixes it on tax dollars, ultimately that site was contaminated due to a lack of enforcement of some rules through some agencies. Unfortunately, that's not this department. This department. I know, I'm just saying that there's a perfect example of, of a failure that now is being resolved. <clears throat> and there's no culpability. Well, there, that, that's the responsibility of the State Department of Environmental Protection. But the EPA, they'll be in there. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's not related to her or to this project. No, no, no. I, I, I appreciate it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep the meeting yep. on scope. Okay. Thank you. Sure what happens. Other comments, questions, concerns? In the board? Kim? Yeah. Um, I want to congratulate you on the improvements on the design here. I think you've come a long way and, uh, and listen to the people that have been talking here. I think that's a very good thing. Um, that corner building is, is something that is very representative of that area. I think what you have there with the bay windows and looking more of a, like a brownstone or a triple decker is good. And uh, the view from the bridge 
going across. Um, that new elevation looks really nice. I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I do have two minor questions that uh, I just want to add on there. Along one of your drawings there, uh, along the driveway side, off of uh, I think you know what that one with, 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 with the retaining wall? Uh, park. Oh yeah. Park. Park. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this, this, this South is, elevation. Yes. The driveway runs alongside that building there. Okay, so and the driveway the driveway runs here. But yeah. But then there's that retaining wall there, right? Park out. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, we know this, this kind of goes to the, the item that Cliff was talking about in terms of us not having all of the site worked out. So this is kind of like represents a sort of worst case scenario of if we had, you know, this, the, the level of the building at this point, you know, the level of Park Avenue is what it, you know, the sidewalk here is what it is. You know, obviously we don't want to have, it would be better for us to have that at a more gentle slope. You know, just in terms of the expense of the, and the house and the for a yeah. yeah, there is, is this, yeah, this, this does grade up along here, whereas the building is, you know, right. is, is at a lower elevation. But I would encourage We are going to have to negotiate that height at various, at various, you know, locations. But I would encourage to refrain from having retaining walls along the edge there, mm -hmm. especially where it's, uh, and then maybe if you can burn it somehow, we're planting so that maybe less of a hazard to people on the public way. I, we, we would endeavor to do that in any case because it'd be I have all stretch and you guys in every uh, sense, yes. we do that. Um, we talked a little bit about this right away mm -hmm. uh, for um, cars. Mm -hmm. I would not encourage that. I would just not have a right away for cars there. I think that's not a good spot, my personal belief. I would encourage maybe having a walkway there or a pathway there, because I can see people in the neighborhood maybe using that as a sort of a cut through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it could be a very nice space, so you're not drawn to a corner, you can just cut around the corner and get around it. Mm -hmm. And it would make, make the edge a little softer. And I think any improvement to that gas station edge there would help in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay? I would just, hear that. No, I, uh, I agree with you. so those are the two things that I would encourage uh, a little more looking into. Okay, thank you. Yeah, mine was, uh, my only comment was going to be around that right of way as well and simply say that, you know, I guess at, after our process, I'd love to see, uh, maybe, I'm not sure we can do a special condition, but I'd like to see TAP weigh in on whether, well, first off, if it is allowable, given the right of way yeah. and what it is and what it can be. Yeah, well, actually our agreement with the gas station owner is that we would not have cars driving in and out because okay, that's already there. his business. Okay, yes. so that's, that's already there. Yeah, it may be appropriate to have it as a walkway. We may, yes, we can have it as a walkway as well, as long as there's no danger to pedestrians cutting across in front of the gas station because he has people pulling in and pulling out. That's, okay. that's, we just have to be careful. Okay, so that is the answer on the right uh, yes. on, on that particular thing. Okay. That's important, I think. So, um, so that one comes off of the, off of the docket, basically. Well, and this board would refer to the board of selectmen, and if they choose yeah. to refer to the and that's and that was going to be my yeah. point. It was going to be more of a do a tech <laughs> thinks is best there. Um, so I think if that were a walk with that, would be a good idea. So that's what I have. I agree with that. David. So, seeing the changes that have been made uh, to the design of a smaller building and uh, how that uh, fits in better with, with the neighborhood, um, and listening to the concerns uh, expressed by some of the neighbors, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with the look of the larger building. I, it's a perfectly nice building. But now that I've seen kind of what you could do with the smaller building, I'm, I'm wondering, can you bring any of that kind of treatment to the larger building to make it more consistent with, with the feel of the neighborhood? I, I mean, I'm, I, if, yeah. So I, I would say in response that this isn't necessarily the neighborhood. Like, I guess I didn't Well, I'm not just looking at that view. 
uh, that, that we're looking to the, bike pack. But that's the view that yeah. anyone would have. Anyone else would be looking into a six and a half foot fence and shrubs that could go above it. So I guess well, is, it, is that is that the case then? It because that that would perhaps alter my opinion if, if the building isn't really going to be too much. Well, I mean, you it's can see it from the yeah, the, the, the I think yeah. that's an important view, because that's actually the view that most people will see yeah. the building okay. from, it's right there. Right. It's like that. It's yeah, but you don't just like bridge like if you're standing on the bridge. On the bridge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're screening the west end and you're screening the, the south end. North end, sorry. So the view from Lowell Street Place will be Screen by shrubbery. Right. And, right. And, 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 and you really can't see it from the street. Right. Because it's, you know, you'd only have it's to look back. between buildings, and we will have shrubbery and trees and a fence. And then from the, from the west, from Wall Street Place. Same. We will have a that fence. That's where yes. proposed tonight about the, the uh, understory screening yeah. by the fast growing conifers. But, but my understanding is that there, there would still be some involvement in final uh, color selection, material certification by you guys. By this board and by the department. Yes. yes. That we fully expect and then we look forward to that input. Any further revisions and plans obviously mm -hmm. require yeah. in the back as well. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we are down a member this evening. If we were to take a vote, it would need to be a unanimous vote to approve the special permit. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I've given the proponent the option of asking for a vote, or if we have the option to continue. Uh, we could continue to this coming Monday evening, I believe. Jen? That, that's up to the board. If, if everyone if everyone, everyone that's, well, that's a different date than the regular. I know it's not a regular scheduled meeting, but I know. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Making it clear, the next regularly scheduled meeting is December 19th. However, should you choose to meet prior to that, that's up to the board. And that would be solely for the purposes of a vote. All members could be present. One more time. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. He'd have to he'd have to review the video. Uh, he'd have two meetings to prepare review. himself. Yeah. yeah. I think that my clients will be able to move forward to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a stab. Uh, motion. I'll move to approve uh, the uh, Let's see it. here it is. I got it. Uh, special permit, EDR special permit for docker docket number three five one nine nineteen R Park Ave uh, Housing Corporation of Arlington. Um, Want me to read out? Uh, yeah, I think you should. Okay. Uh, so, as follows, I move to approve the following uh, special permit. General conditions. The final plans and specifications for the site, including all building signs, exterior lighting, landscaping, bike parking, locations, and types of rack, and types of rack and sidewalk materials and dimensions <coughs> shall be subject to the approval of the Arlington Redevelopment Board prior to issuance of a building permit. The board shall review and approve samples of exterior materials. Final plans and specifications shall include complete information concerning colors, materials, lighting, and other features that comprise the details of this final design. Two, the applicant shall provide a statement from the town engineer that all proposed utility services have adequate capacity to serve the development and that proposed site drainage is adequate. Three, the board maintains continuing jurisdiction over this permit and may, after a duly advertised public hearing, attach other conditions or modify these conditions as it deems appropriate in order to protect the public interest and welfare. Snow four, snow removal from all parts of the site, including abutting sidewalks and the pedestrian walkway from the sidewalk to the bikeway, shall be the responsibility of the owner and shall be accomplished in accordance with the town bylaws. Five, all exterior trash and storage areas on the pro property, if any, shall be properly screened and maintained in accordance with Article 30 of the bylaws of the Town of Arlington. Six, 
Trash shall be picked up only on weekdays and only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. 7. No final or permanent certificate of occupancy shall be issued on this project until the project is completed in its final form and all conditions within this permit have been met. 8. Upon the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall file with the building inspector and the Department of Community Safety the names and telephone numbers of contact personnel who may be reached 24 hours each day during the construction period. Now for the special conditions. 1. Upon installation of landscaping materials <clears throat> and other site improvements, the applicant shall remain responsible for such materials and shall replace and repair as necessary to remain in compliance with the approved site plan. Two, the applicant shall show evidence of agreement with Zipcar to provide an alternative TDM method prior to issuance of a final certificate of occupancy. Three, the applicant shall continuously abide by the Transportation Demand Management Plan dated November 17, 2016, in keeping with Section 801A3 of the Zoning Bylaw. Applicants shall conduct a survey of residents six months after the date of the certificate of occupancy in order to determine a baseline mode split for the project, percentage of resident households using cars, bikes, transit, or walking as their primary mode. The survey, which shall be provided to the Director of Planning and Community Development, here and after the Director, shall include questions to determine if additional resident households could be using alternatives to a car and impediments to increasing non-vehicle travel to the site. One year from the date of the first report and annually thereafter, a similar report based on survey data will be delivered to the director. If vehicle usage is increased from the baseline report to an extent requiring reconsideration, owner shall work with the director to reduce vehicle usage. Report to the director shall include survey results and the following additional information. Number of households with one or more cars parked on the site. Number of households with bikes on the site. Incentives provided to households by the applicant and actual usage of incentives, i.e., how many bicycles are usually parked on site, how many transit paths, passes are purchased, and how much subsidy is provided. If, subsi if subsidies are being provided to resident households, how many and of what type? And then, uh, as part of uh, the motion as well, I guess we would include the plans as delivered this evening. Uh, Dated December 5th, special permit December 5th, 2016, from Davis Square Architects. Um, I believe it's on the purpose. Do we have some that was shown? As, as, the, as provided. Great. One change. One change. Well, there was only one additional that we showed you that was not. The shadows. It was the uh, Did you provide that to Yeah, we would like to provide that yes. as well. Then. Okay, so this as amended by the one for the one board. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> yes, a lot of work to do. Right. This board still has uh, additional business to conduct, so please go out the back door, take conversations downstairs.
put a space for that, I ask that you can step outside. <laughs> You're up, Ken. <laughs> David will be over his cold and he'll be able to read it when I'm gone. I'm pretty much ammo. Oh, this sticks forever. I come off of it until. The shadow cloth? Yeah, I'll take one of those. It was missing one, sh uh, one section. I mean, I looked out my window this morning and that building would be blocking me. Right, take this and you can, you can make additional Guaranteed. comments, please. We, I, I do have to ask you to, to keep it right now because we do have Oh, yeah, yeah. So there are so shadow plots in this? Somewhere? Yes, there is. Yeah, there is. Yep. Right, Thank you. Close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Discussion of 2017 town meeting warrant article. Jenny. Yeah, all right. We've got an audience of two. <laughs> um, but please, <laughs> <more. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, let me just close the door. So I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll just quickly open it up. I think you have one thing in the packet, though, that was prepared by Laura. Um, yes. A lot of red lines. Quick, quick overview. And this is not like a formal hearing or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, um, basically, the warrant will open tomorrow, December 6th, and it closes on January 27th, uh, as was just posted and distributed to all of us uh, in town. So, uh, so there's like basically four things that I just wanted to bring to your attention. The first one you're already aware of, but I just want to make it clear. The comprehensive zoning bylaw changes that we've been talking about, we hired the consultant RKG. The kickoff meeting with them is happening tomorrow morning, but we don't anticipate any kind of comprehensive zoning bylaw update until maybe the, the projected timeline is next fall, 2017. So with that in mind, um, we don't want to delay other things that are currently in the works. Like for example, we've been working very hard with a subgroup of people through the residential study group which is part of the Master Plan Implementation Committee, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the residential study group has identified at this moment in time at least two issues that they're considering moving forward. One of them would be a zoning bylaw issue. The other one is likely town bylaw changes, which of course would not be under the purview of this board, but I wanted to bring them to everybody's attention. The first one on um, residential study that they're talking about is um, making amendments to, uh, this is like a combined thing, not with a specific recommendation just yet, but addressing issues around garages, uh, the slope of driveways, and just basically overall imp impact of some new housing on streetscapes. And I'm, I'm speaking very broadly because I don't have a specific change proposed yet, because that's something that the residential study group is currently investigating and will be discussing. I believe they have a meeting next week. Next yes, week. Next week. Next week. Next week. I think we'll have something ready. Meeting before our next board meeting. And so we would go through and any of these things just like always, we go through a public process where we'll have you know, more conversations with the board um, to get your input, weigh in, and then have any formal public hearings as would be as would be needed as part of the warrant article process. The other the second of them, so obviously that's a zoning bylaw change, or maybe not so obviously. That would be a zoning bylaw change. The second thing is um, in part addressing issues around construction impacts. And mm -hmm. um, we're currently calling this sort of, in quotes, a good neighbor by law, which would basically address things like dust, noise, duration of work, um, work zone, uh, you know, sort of some of the details that had somewhat been raised at special town meeting this year under the rock removal regulated, but would go even further to address a lot of the kinds of construction impacts that we have heard as a group, the residential study group that is, um, and try to be responsive to those things. However, at the moment, it's looking like those kinds of amendments would go would fall under the town bylaw. I because think that's great. Many of the things I thought that are, it was ill placed in the zone. It may not the, work in the zoning. Yeah. The, 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 this the is other like, again, the other advantage to this potential proposal is that it provides clear paths to enforcement. Yeah. Who to call and when and how to have problems solved quickly. Mm -hmm. Couple of models we're working off of that I think are really helpful. 
Yeah, so we're working with town council and the town manager on a draft of something. And again, that's supposed to be discussed next Tuesday evening at the next residential study group meeting, which of course anybody is welcome to attend. Hopefully we will talk about committee appointments tonight. Um, and then uh, the last thing would be just the amendments to what was adopted at spring town meeting this year related to mixed use. And I'll let you talk about that because that's the spreadsheet, or not the spreadsheet, the yeah. Handout at this Probably everybody remembers what we what we had proposed last year. To um, I want to take a step back and talk about the master plan and the message from the master plan being that they wanted that people wanted to see protection of the residential zones, but more um, development and activity in the commercial zones and the mixed use was passed to um, encourage a new kind of development in the, um, in the commercial zones. And so we have about six months of experience with the new bylaw, and um, the good news is that we've had three projects come in the door, interested in using um, and developing some kind of mixed use. One on Broadway, which you permitted about two weeks ago, I guess, and um, one on Mass Ave near Schuler, uh, Mass Ave and Schuler Court, which is uh, right where the high school is. And the third one is on Summer Street, um, out past the rec, the rec center, um, and they are coming in on January 9th as a mixed use project. Um, and Schuler Court is maybe the second meeting in January. Yeah. It's not quite ready, but it's 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 approaching. Um, the feedback that we've gotten on the dimensional and density regulations is that they're too tight to truly um, encourage the kind of development that we've talked about. Um, in short, our requirements allow one additional story of commercial, but the same amount of residential that was allowed before. So we haven't really opened that door to allow more residential, which you may remember one of the pluses of that is to um, provide customers for the business district. Um, the problems are centered around two requirements. The first is lot area per dwelling unit. This requirement determines the number of units that can go on the site. It's a, a hard and fast number. And what it, what we have observed and what people have, the, the um, proponents have told us is that it pushes them to have bigger units so that they can use the area, but they can't have more units. And it, at least two of the people have told us that they would have preferred to build more units of different sizes, to have some small, some large, some one bedrooms. <coughs> some um, more family oriented, but um, that, that particular requirement is, a, a, is constraining them to the number of units they can have. Um, I looked at a couple of neighboring towns to see what they do. Um, I looked at Watertown, some of Brooklyn and Newton. I actually looked at a lot of towns and some uh, I couldn't find the right comparable kind of properties, but um, in all of those neighborhoods, the the requirement in, uh, for residential property in business zones, they had no requirement for lot area per dwelling unit. So um, my, my feeling after, after doing that little bit of research was that, that we should get rid of it completely. That's not, it's not serving our purposes. Um, Can I ask you one? Yeah. So what you're saying is, let's say for every unit, there's a minimum, let's say, so much 700 here, okay? Mm -hmm. So you take the 700 divided into a lot area, that's how many units you have in that lot. That's right. And you're saying to get rid of that requirement. That's right. And let the market or let uh, that fluctuate to, to maximum density of units. That's right. The market and the, um, the constraints of the lot itself. And that's only as far as what you could build. Only, only in these particular zones. Only in commercial zones. Only, and I didn't even touch the B1 zone. B1 is the zone that's sort of the most like um, transitional from or residential to business, and I, I just left that as it yeah. was. So it's still subject to the height maxes. Yeah. yeah. All, yeah. yeah. The se true. all the setbacks and all the heights are still there. That's right. So we're not getting any larger buildings. So we're just getting a little better density to make it more encouraged uh, the developers to develop there. 
Right. Well, getting rid of flat area per dwelling unit particularly allows more variation in size of units. So you're not. Um, so before, you, and we're now, I should say, because people actually want smaller units to some extent. Right, and I think the owners want to have a variety. Right. They, you know, they want to have a variety of different units. And well, the, the small so units encourage a little more diversity as far as affordability. Right. And empty nesters. And you, you, you have a more diverse range of who can afford to live here. And I think that's, <coughs> well, that is another That's a good thing. Because inclusionary is not triggered in many of the developments that we've been looking at because they're too small. Right. Yeah, but which actually works, against, works against us. Yes. Okay. Which actually works against yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> Opening up yeah. the diversity of units available is a goal in that You, you, our oh, inclusionary sorry. zoning requires you to have, what, six units? Yes, the threshold. Uh, the threshold is six units. So if you're requiring 700 feet, you know, I don't know, that's actually a bad example probably, but, um, you know, you may not get up to the six because you can't get there. Once you get up to six but units, yeah. I believe you need, you need inclusionary, right? Yeah. And, and with the numbers we have here, we don't get there fast enough enough for the properties. So if we lower the unit, it gives us a better chance to have more inclusionary right. units, more affordable units. Right, it's serving more households it's, in the same area. It's a, it's, a, it's a better possibility right now. It's more, cha more challenging financially is part of like yeah. because of the mix. But Can I ask a process and, and uh, administrative question more mm -hmm. than anything else? Because I, I, I think this is a great discussion, but if it's because we want to make sure we have something in the warrant, that we can, you know, put something forth if we want to. You weren't thinking that we'd do something so specific in the warrant. We would simply put a placeholder that says to um, amend mm -hmm. the mixed use uh, bylaw, you know, to, I, I don't know, we, we come up with right. the language. Yeah. But, but I, think, I think in the end, this, this looks great from a, you know, to be discussed and, and at a hearing and everything else as to what's in, what's out, what's good, what's bad. Mm -hmm. But for the warrant itself, I think all we're saying is is that we need to rethink some of the um, uh, table of dimension den density requirements, quite possibly, mm -hmm. for the mixed use that we passed last year with right. one year with one year of experience. Right, and I wanted to kind of put it on the table now, yeah. early. Agreed. To hear whether you. Oh, I think it makes perfect sense. Interested in doing well, that. well, my point is, is I think the education on this stuff is is valuable, and we should make sure that a placeholder warrant article goes in there. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we ultimately, with the help of the residential study committee, because I'm assuming that they're. Well, no, this is this no, is this commercial. is this is commercial. Okay, so. So anyway, so as we kind of think these things, sorry, I was getting confused with the, no, the previous okay. one. But we would have something yeah. more broad, not as personal. Exactly. I, I would, I would want to make sure that, you know, we are allowed to be in scope mm -hmm. on a very wide range of things as we, so I guess I'd want to take a look at what we did for the actual mixed use last year and, you know, just kind of truncate it. Like, yeah, for the language. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Warren article, because usually they're like, you know, two sentences that say, hey, to consider right. mixed use stuff. Well, and what's good about that really is there too. it gets you in, it gets us a place, but we can continue to talk about it. That's what I'm saying. March. Exactly. So we exactly. We don't want to, yeah, we don't want to have the hearing in December. I mean, that don't yeah. want to show. So you asked right. us to consider it. Just start thinking about it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Just share your thoughts with me. And it's the political questions as well as the content questions of, you know, do we think we can get the support to do this? I'll just finish. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Two other types of changes I was I was suggesting we consider. One, the next one is floor area ratio. A couple people have said to me, you know, architects and, and engineers, that you can't attain the height that we're allowing because the floor area ratio is too small. Unless you were to build a very skinny building. That, that, that just doesn't make sense economically. So, um, again, I looked at other communities. For what do they, how do they treat residences in commercial zones? And um, I found a pretty wide range from one floor area ratio of one to up to four. Um, Coolidge Corner in Brookline is a three. 
and um, but most of them were closer to two, and so I, I was thinking that maybe we should consider going to two. So these are your recommendations, or these are what is? This is my recommendations. Okay. So what's there right now is, is 1.5. 1.5, right. And so, like, for instance, the Broadway project that HCA brought in, they had 14 units. They could have done, like, maybe 18 units if the floor area ratio had been higher and if we'd gotten rid of the um, lot area per dwelling units. And honestly, probably there would have been very little impact. Maybe the building would have been even a little bigger and would have, like, really held down that corner, which was, you know, in that area, there's so little development. You probably would wouldn't have either wouldn't have noticed the difference or would have thought it was fine. You know, so it's we can do more analysis on what that would mean to go to two, but I thought it was worth considering that um, you, we have a we have a maximum height of five stories, but it can't be attained without raising the floor area ratio. Um, I kind of agree with you there. I like that, but. I don't understand. I don't understand well enough all these different zones: the B2, B2A, B3, yeah. and B4. <laughs> well, uh, that, so we're that's the kind of thing. Like once, this is like just to test mm -hmm. these. Well, we would get into like a lot more depth and study. We have examples. Okay, we have it. It would be yeah. a much yeah. oh. bigger, broader discussion. But wasn't there a group that was going to do? That's the, the zoning recodification working group. That's that's part of that concrete uh, okay. whole zoning bylaw changes. But these are things that we happen to notice, like in practice right now, okay. and recently about to changes that could okay. potentially serve us well in the near future, more near term stuff. And also, the zoning bylaw revisions are not dealing with policy changes like this. They're going to deal with cleaning up, you know, in quotes. Yes, because it's all spotted all over the place. Right yeah, now. I think the organization of the zoning. I think just about everybody feels like we have too many business districts, though it's not productive. You know, it's just confusing to yes. people. And mm -hmm. so I think whether we can do that in recodification isn't 100% clear, but we we will do it in the, in the not too distant future. But this is what we have now. So, and I, I can give you, you know, I actually did start to put together like Trader Joe's, what district is that? And, you know, looking at different things, but I don't seem to have it with me, so I'll get you that for the next meeting. Spring town meeting, actually, the, te the report to town meeting had the description, I believe it did, I'm just sort of remembering this, the, the uh, description of what, what can go and what lives in every business district that we wet when we were at the time making those proposed changes. Okay. So I'll, I'll pull it out. Back on that. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll bring it to the next meeting, too, as well. Because I, I get confused myself. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then the last Good. thing, Thanks the so last much thing is we had these provisions last year where we made the, the larger lots even more restrictive and upon reflection I'm not sure that makes that much sense we haven't had anything come in the door that was over 20,000 square feet um, two of the lots were 10,000 square feet and one was I think even smaller isn't sure if we're at like 7,000 yeah they're yeah. all yeah. very small lots because yeah. that's what we have here but um, I wanted us to also consider removing those. Is that the, also the contributing factor is because of the price of land? Because the larger, larger the lot, it's that much more money. There are that many yeah, half acre loans. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I think we were thinking of some of the bigger parcels, what might happen to them in yeah. the future. Mm -hmm. But we weren't taking everything collectively as a whole because on average, the lot sizes are smaller. But when you look at, like, strategically, some of the development that in many of the plans notes that we want to advance, mm -hmm. they, those, those are, are better okay. So mm -hmm. it makes sense, but not okay. as a whole. Would you say anything? I said there are only a handful. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no Jimmy, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I know that a couple of people have talked about doing the citizens initiated article, but they wanted to see what the board had plans itself um, with two in particular. They, these would be ones related to marijuana, um, either um, buffer zones for um, medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, or as some communities are doing, um, putting a, a, a moratorium on the recreational marijuana sales as <laughs> is that something you'll be considering or you know? Just other? very cursory that for that one of those items would be out of this board's purview, which is the prohibition 
for the moratorium. Recreational marijuana sales, and I, but I do believe well, the moratorium, that through, that or a moratorium. moratorium. But that, that was done through a zoning chain. That a moratorium change. would be, that's something, that's a change that needs to happen in the zoning bylaw. That's what I mean, that's why it would be a zoning bylaw change. Yeah, you mean just taking it out. Is that what you're talking about? I no, no. Not. What I'm asking is whether you're considering or, or planning to consider a moratorium for recreational marijuana sales as you did for oh, medical I marijuana see. Well, sales. and that's what I'm saying. My answer was correct in the first case was that the Board of Selectmen or... No, <laughs> why is it the Board of Selectmen? It's a zoning change. It's a change so to the zoning bylaw. I'm that's going by what... That's how it's all I'm not saying. Is that's what was done the last the time. I mean, I finished the last time you were called. The Board put in a... a moratorium in the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. I'm simply asking, are you planning in the zoning bylaw to do that for recreational marijuana? So at the moment, we haven't discussed that. No, the, the board hasn't discussed that. So I think we can, you know, dance around who does it first. Yeah. But, um, that's all we, haven't that's we haven't discussed it. This is that's the first discussion we've had. Nothing, nothing in the way. No, but you are being rude. <laughs> and so for, for being rude, why it's just a, it's so because, why am I being rude? Because because you interrupted when the answer was. I was interrupted, sir. I was interrupted. The question has been asked. The question has been Thank you. Been Thank, you. Been Thank, you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. the answer. Thank you very much. I will pass information on. Rude as always, Chris. Thank you. Moving on. Any yeah, other any other comments or questions? No. Okay. <clears throat> well. So that all right. The next item. So Mike is departing the board as of January 31st. So we need to designate somebody from the board to the Community Preservation Act Committee. I asked if Mike could continue <laughs> and all the way to the state to find out whether he could, and they said it has to be a member of the board. Right. Did you do it's that? written into the, the law. On the Community Preservation? Yeah. It's actually <laughs> very involved, and it's a great, great committee, very collegial. And it's, uh, but it has a couple of very uh, busy periods around the applications for community preservation um, uh, projects. So that will occur in the fall when we get the preliminaries in, and then as we go up to the uh, spring and kind of agree on which projects we're going to put forth to town. So. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry about that all. Um, I just have done that in six years. So <laughs> it was just time for me to say something. I, I actually said something way back my first year as well. So that would be the second time I've said something. Um, so I apologize to my colleagues on board and to the uh, staff. Thank you. So um, anyway, so community preservation is just a great committee, uh, very collegial, um, but it is quite a bit of work. What will typically happen is, is there's nine members of the committee. You, you go and you kind of talk about the different projects. You give your opinions. Uh, you try to report back, which I probably haven't done as much last year. We were really rushed, uh, as I should have, to this board. Um, but with respect to um, time commitment, it's actually fairly time intensive, I got to tell you. Um, so um, I, I, I will warn folks with respect to that. Like, was it, um, may I ask? Yeah, sure, please. Like, you were meeting, like, I feel like two or three times. I have, month. I have two more meetings like in December. Multiple visits yeah. with um, people who apply. Exactly, and, exactly. And consultations. Yeah, and, and consultations. Yeah. So, for example, one of the projects uh, Jenny had put forth, and, you know, I would speak to Jenny or someone, like, we all kind of had a project that we would try to shepherd through. Uh, the process to some extent, mm -hmm. it, you know. So there, there is quite a bit of work. I will say I was very interested in it. Um, so um, I probably, I, I think, I think one would not probably have to be quite so involved. I think you could, you could um, um, do a very good job and just make it known that you know the, you're the arms representative and you feel that it's more of a consultative back to you know the board, etc. Um, I do think it's a shame that the um, statute is written that way because it is somewhat of a time commitment. And I think it is tough to ask someone who puts all the time that you know, we do as a board on something like that. Now, obviously, you guys are also working on the recodification, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, I'm not saying that those are any less uh, intensive, but, uh, uh, but I, I guess it was just disappointing. So, so 
you could continue serving through the end of January. Yep. I, I, I was expecting, yeah. And then you would just need somebody to pick it up. Yep. If someone can maybe go to one of the January meetings so I could do an introduction and, and uh, you know, maybe, you know, have that kind of, uh, maybe it's even if the new person, if we know who the new person is, then, you know, maybe I could even take that person. So, I, I kind of told them I'd try to, <laughs> I'd try to get someone into, because, because it'll be a fairly busy time when I leave because all the projects will be coming mm -hmm. uh, due. So. Are we sticking on a new bank? Well, I don't know who we have not designated. I mean, we haven't even started interviewing right. people. Or, um, yeah, you're yeah, probably going to need coverage. We anyway. need somebody more immediately, I think. That's, uh, yeah, at least for the time being. And I'm not able to add on another committee. But I will. There's only a partial list of I will sit in. Yes, it is. I'll sit in temporarily until we find somebody to fill in permanently. I, I just can't make a commitment and I feel bad because if I make a commitment that I can't, it's just right now we're in a busy time. Um, yeah, and I can tell you when the January meetings are. So. Okay, good. <coughs> Bless you. Friday evening or also daytime commitments? No, uh, evening. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be possible to have a daytime. Yeah, no, no. And, and actually, they're very, it, they're, ama it, they're amazingly uh, good about knowing when the ARB meetings are mm -hmm. and scheduling around them because they believe that the ARB is a very important member of the committee, which is very nice of them. So. All right, so I'll just let me know what, and I'll pitch okay. to you. Yeah, I'll, uh, if we find a permanent replacement. So do you want to, like, formalize that just quickly and vote or something? I probably should. I mean, I can if you want. I can, yeah, go ahead. I can nominate myself. Uh, I'll move to approve Ken as my replacement on the Community Preservation Committee um, <coughs> until another person is designated. Um, and maybe, do you want to have that start? There's actually, um, if you want to come with me on the 17th, and then there's a meeting on the 31st of January. 17th is doable for 31st. I'm in Buffalo. You're in Buffalo? Okay. Okay. So um, I could. Well, I might have to come back. It's my last day as an official member of here. So I'll. Um, okay. So why don't you plan on coming on the 17th? They. Uh, where is it? It's usually. Well, actually, no one's second. They don't want to. It's the usual. <laughs> it's the usual spot that we meet. Where's that? The second, uh, second floor. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. oh, you mean it's in like the. No, the, our, our usual uh, spot that we meet, yeah. Okay. I kind of like this room here. Yeah, no, 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 it's room because it's too fancy. <laughs> Plus I yell at people in this room. Yeah, there's something about it. Yeah, I've done that in this room. Not, not just you. <laughs> it's the painting that get me angry. I think it's the animals. Totally. Could be. Uh, this, is all, well. this is all being taped. Not a, exactly. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, I knew it was. I knew it was what I was saying. Oh, I know right now, too. That's fine. If someone's waiting until the end. Dead animals in the Oh, yeah, there's a lot. He's very proudful. I love his hat. Those are his wins. I love the hat. Anyway, all right. Okay. Is that it? Do we need to discuss the rest of the committee? discuss any of these other Do we need to formalize David's appointment to the zoning recovery? Yeah, if you haven't done that yet, yeah, yeah, I mean, no. we yeah, you kind of switched him in. And well, he's been, he, was, he was gracious enough to take it on. Um, I'll move to approve David as the uh, 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 Arlington Redevelopment Board representative to the Zoning Recodification Committee. Is that correct? Working yes. Group, yeah. Working group. Working group. There you go. I'll second that. Congratulations. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Somebody said to me, that they think that they were the rep to the Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee? Was that It may have been me. Oh. I think I, think I may have <laughs> been that at one point in time. I think I went to a couple of meetings and then I lost track of it. Do we have this? So we do. I can just, Allie Carter, the new Economic Development Coordinator, will be attending those meetings so I can have her report back with any Perfect. clarifications on the board's role in relation to that committee. I wasn't <coughs> Arlington Court and, and Economic Development. Yeah. I think
probably that's all to cover for now. Yeah. We're going through the minutes? Oh, we're, no, 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 that's all to cover for that agenda. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> support letters for community preservation projects. So we, there's two projects that the department is working on and advancing either as, on behalf of the ARP or in partnership with um, the Taste of Historical Commission and a number of other groups representing historical and cultural interests in town. We're wondering if one you'd want to write letters of support for those two projects. The deadline is actually this Friday, to be clear about that. And then two, if you would want to support any other projects, just more in general. Right, so that um, we've been asked. the Housing Corporation of Arlington has a project on what it's just called Westminster. It's the school that they're renovating. And that was um, mentioned in the housing production plan as a, a project that um, one of, you know, it fit into the recommendations of the housing production plan. If you wanted to write a letter of support for that, that would What are the other projects? What are the other projects? Affordable housing projects? So the two projects, the two projects that, that were being asked to. Oh. I'm sorry, I one thought you said what they were. One, one, so one, one is the Historic Resources Working Group, um, and that is to update the inventory of historic resources. And that was a recommendation of the master plan. Um, and then the other one is Woodmore Park, which, um, which do you want to talk about that? basically making modest improvements to Woodmore Park, which is technically an name would be in front of the, the no, area this is in front the park. of the, it's the <laughs> area in front of the Jefferson Center. It's the park in front with the rails, which is basically yeah, removing uh, the railing, that sort of the granite and metal. Oh, sorry, I meant the the railroad. The railroad. Oh, not the railroad yeah. actually. We, no, no, no. I meant more. I was just oh, saying which park it was. Oh yeah, with the railroad. Yes. Right. Um, We're talking about doing modest improvements. This is uh, along the lines of Mass Ave Phase Two Street Stage One, but not like. All of the recommendations in that proposal, but just okay. not as that, I know last year when we were asked, and this may not be relevant, last year when we were asked to give support to more or other projects, it was my position, and I, I think my colleagues agree yeah, with me, that choosing one project over the others was not necessarily mm -hmm. fair. Um, that being said, an affordable housing project is, you know, a real house, it's something that Although, we encourage. I guess my point on that one, and I believe it's the same one, is because we had an affordable housing project, Kimball Farmer House, last year. That's right. And I think what we said was the permit is our endorsement. And I think it's that's right. I think it's a little strange to go necessarily beyond the permit because we've got conditions in there and we've got this, that, and the other thing. And you yeah. know, I, I, you know, personally, I, I kind of do look at it that. Having said that. If we actually own the property, well, that's right. <laughs> then I think if we actually then I think we should and we not only endorse it, but yeah. like well, know, I think if we own the property, yeah. that's so, uh, uh, so so like, but, but I think if I recall correctly, we kind of said okay, the permit is our the permit is our endorsement of affordable housing. So the Westminster project had a comprehensive permit from the DBA, so it's an unusual situation. Uh, Westminster is different. Area. You're right. Yeah. The nine the nine uh, the nine unit one. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that at least, that time, when the last time we talked about this, we did have the housing production. Plan. We did not. Somewhere. We did not issue a permit, but we I think we did weigh in on Westminster and give it our support for the comprehensive uh, permit. Yeah. So we have supported that in mm -hmm. the past, and I think that that would not necessarily obviously carry the same weight as a special permit, but I think it can be read as an endorsement of the project without going further in in unfairly weighting the scales toward any of these projects. So we could direct our representative to support it. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. And you know, I think we should advocate for improvement of a property that is actually our property. But yeah, yeah. We, the the request is to have CPA funds, but also mm -hmm. use some urban renewal funds. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's not just a commitment to CPA; it's also a, a, a sizable chunk of money that would come out of the urban renewal fund. So. One of these days we'll figure out what's all a property, right? Because I have no idea. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that, have we? No, we've gotten mm -hmm. through a lot. Maybe of the historic projects. register would take care of that for us. <laughs> no, right. we, we, we can. <laughs> I, I, so I, I, think, I think the consensus is that we'll, I, we are supportive of CPA and, and its projects, but I, I don't think it would necessarily be fair for us to weigh in on one over another. 
with the exception of the order. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand you, because I mean, we, I can draft a letter and then circulate it, or however you want to handle that exactly. With I'll the defer to the board staff. That should be done. Certainly, only to argue. Mm -hmm. So, are we the proponent? No. I, so I, I act as secretary ex officio of this board and as the director of the community and development on behalf of the mayor. I would be submitting this. So it is technically on behalf of so the So you're not really like saying a letter of support, but you're saying we 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 support yeah, we, this we all, work we being done. Yeah. Whatever. And I, I think I think all three projects fall within our goals. For lack of a better word. Uh, I think I can say that I would support the choice of any one of them. Um, I don't necessarily want to put my way, our way behind one over another. I think they're all worthy projects. Okay. Thank you. But if we are submitting, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm hedging because I'm, I'm not really sure what the answer is. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem. Look, I, I don't even have a problem with the letter for the affordable housing. I was just saying, I think it's a little bit weird <laughs> that we would give a letter in support when we have also like approved a special permit for it. Seems a little incongruous to me. But, yeah, well, in Westminster, we didn't, but we gave support. Well, we, but we gave say, yeah, but there's, and that's, so that's why we had to to support that. Yeah, because we've already supported that. Obviously, we support the one more for Robin's house. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, we can be in favor of a letter. We can have some ground. I can also, in like a cover letter, can just state that it was discussed in this meeting and the board had provided support for something like that. I mean, you know, the, something along those lines can be done. Just to make it clear, it's not me acting alone. Yeah, I think I can look at that. That's good. All right, uh, we have several meetings to approve, uh, beginning with October 17th. I did not personally have any changes for those. I don't have the 21st. I have all of them. Well, the you mean the November 21st? I wish you were there. Yeah, it was. But I could come by late Thursday, right? Because it would be late. Yep. Um, even if it isn't finished, we'll have to see what we're That'd be good. That'd be good. <clears throat> you make the changes I had on the on, on the something. I believe so. I guess. Uh, I'm happy with that. Yes. Right. Oh, you're saying you did. You did it. You did the change. I'm okay with it. Right. So those those are in what was submitted to us on Friday. Circulated to us on Friday. Yes. Changes. Yeah. Yes. Just and one change.
I'll move to approve the November 6th. Okay. That's okay. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 February 21st. Uh, there are too many B's in the third line down. This is Mr. Bonnell, right? Uh, that's the only one. Shoot it off. Red it. That's the only issue I caught. Third line down. Third line down. Uh, third just a just a type of oh, third paragraph. Yeah. I'm looking at the one page. <laughs> this is November 21st. 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 I'm just reading it. Well, the first time. <laughs> okay. The third paragraph. I still don't see what it did. Too many things up. The third paragraph down. Yeah, There's no red. Yeah. Like that. I don't think you can miss that would be an issue. But I have other changes in the middle of what's going on there. Yeah. I moved to approve the minutes of November 21st with the changes that uh, you added. Mm -hmm. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our next meeting is. No, no, no. We should be moving to the next meeting. Because I had one question. Somebody, I remember somebody had expressed concern. Security related concerns about people congregating on the bike path? Yes. Are you writing or something? On November 21st? That wasn't that the. Um, um, no, that was, that was November 21st. There was a letter. Uh, the woman who lives on Royal Street Place who oh. was concerned about resident safety. Resident safety. The area is large, does not a low place expressed concern for the head of the building and resident safety. Yeah, I, you know, I might actually add in. Along the bike path? Along the bike path. Resident safety along the bike path. Second page, second paragraph, third sentence at the bottom. One, two, three, thank you. Resident building and resident safety on the bike path. Right? Yeah, all along the bike path. Either way. Okay. <coughs> Can you do it that big? Yes.